let's make a bottle. So we're going to make uh, just a kind of simple bottle, but a more asymmetric organic shape. Now, you can use something, like I said, you can use a bottle as a model, <laughs> bottle model. If you have something to take dimensions from, if not, it's fine. Find an image that works fine, that works, and an uh, imported canvas that works fine. Best thing to use is like a detergent bottle, integrated handle, that sort of thing. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got a couple of examples here. This is directly off of a Murphy uh, Murphy's oil soap. Um, and this is created with a loft. Main thing being that you see how it's kind of sort of straight up and down, but it's also curved in a couple of in a couple of areas. It also has a cap that I've added some features to, but it has, let me move the cap up. Oops. Come on. There we go. Rotates up and down, and you can come on. Keep snapping back into position. If I wanted it to, I would say, okay, fine, hide it. Jeez, it keeps snapping back into position. So it is threaded, it is hollow. Same thing with the cap. They're threaded on the inside. Very simple, very straightforward. Those are auto generated components. Uh, a more interesting bottle, and what I'm more talking about, is like a soap bottle, a detergent bottle. That seems, at first glance, much more complex. This is actually much more simple. Same thing, though. Bottle cap twists off, moves up and down. That sort of thing. It is hollow. Has threads. As does the cap. Why is the bottle... Oh, hollow up in there too. What is going on here? Weird. Don't know why the bottle is hidden. All righty, that is interesting. That should have moved over. Anyhow, so there you go. So essentially what this is, and let me cycle back before I created the lofts and such. This is a series of sketches sitting on a series of construction planes based off of just an image. So you can see how the loft tool that we played with with the ring project, we go down to loft, transitions between two or more sketch profiles or planar faces. So this is a case of using more than two sketch profiles, and it creates a complex shape around that. What that is, and I just use some estimations because obviously my image is just 2D. So I base this off of, off of some uh, ellipse shapes, some oval shapes. This is what I mean by if you have a bottle to go off of, great. You can get some kind of real dimensions. I'm not expecting this to be exact. This is much more of about understanding how to use a loft tool with multiple sketches and how to add threads and such. If you can't find something or just frankly don't feel like it, find an image. I looked through. All right, let me jump screens here. Where is my, there we are. Jump over, eh, I looked around, found some, there's some great stock images. And that, are, but those are in profile, so you can see exactly where the hole and such like that for the handle is. Great, those work really well for this. So I, that's what I recommend doing. If you want to take some dimensions off or, off an actual bottle, excellent. But that's about what we're looking for. From there, use the loft tool, which again you select these in progression, and unhide that. Creates this bottle shape. Now it is solid. Let me hide the uh, canvas for a second because I added the handle later. There you go. It's kind of an amorphous shape. Keep going. Oops, I went all the way forward. Sorry. Loft tool. This is just going through sketches. Add an additional sketch in the front here. And I actually inadvertently, inadvertently sketched directly on the curved surface. So apparently the sketch has gotten 
or the sketch on a surface has gotten much, much better with Fusion. I had ex I thought I had selected the um, construction plane that I was using or that I had set. Instead, I selected the surface. So that's impressive. Uh, that must be a new thing because you used to not be able to do that on a more complex curved surface. So, hey, there we go. Neat. But all I did was added a sketch, just traced as best I could this opening. Then, I used, it hit the body. Sorry. There we go. Where the hell's the bottle? Why are you not seeing it? Ugh. Anyway, so I sketched that, projected it through, or really just used a split body tool. So that just cut through the existing body. And again, I'm not sure why it's not showing the body as an object. Anyway, it cut through, split that into two different bodies. As you can see here, we have the original and now the section. Hide that body so you have a cut through element. What the heck just happened there? Um, that wasn't there before. Okay, that's very strange. I don't know why that was... I don't know why that's showing like that, this strange split thingy here. That wasn't there before. And now it's not showing after I just put a fillet on the corner. Okay, I have no idea. So if you run into something like that, let me know. Uh, don't know what that is. Um, from there, I just extruded a cylinder to the top. Added some fillets just for fun, make it a little cleaner. Use the shell tool to hollow it out. Added threads using the thread tool, which automatically creates threads based on the size of the uh, the diameter of the cylinder. Did the shell tool hollow out the handle as well? It did. <clears throat> Question being that did the shell tool hollow out the handle as well? It did. I can apply a section analysis, which just makes a cross section. And you can see here, let me hide the uh, construction planes and the sketches. It also hollows out around the handle. Now, an important thing is I added the shell tool before the threads, because if I add the shell tool afterwards, it's going to try to calculate the shell based off of the thread geometry. I do not want that. So that's just something to keep in mind. But yes, it does show it does hollow the whole thing. So we played with the shell tool in the um, in making the containers, the Liddy container. Same thing here, only the whole point of the shell tool is it's like a three-dimensional offset tool. This is its best as shown here. So in moving forward, just adding some additional features here, um, making the construction planes for at making the cap. It's not showing them because they are hidden at the moment. Doing the same thing up, up top. I am estimating that the cap in this, because I only have one directional picture, is oval in shape. So I created some oval shapes. As you can see here, the sketches. Now it's important to add these onto the sketch planes so that you can more easily go back and re uh, uh, redefine any dimensions or anything. I'll explain it as we're modeling. Loft there. Extrude to there, a couple of fillets for fun, another for the top. What I did is inside, and let me hide this first section, sketch on the bottom here just to double the profile. Extrude upwards to create the hole, just a recess that's the same size. A little chamfer just because you can, and use the thread tool that it just automatically creates threads. From there, added the joint so that the whole thing can move. And the last thing is grounding the bottle object. So my cap can move around if it doesn't snap back into position. And this time it's not. Just a different type of joint. So that's all. So that sounds like a lot, but it's really, really not. So let's get started with a different version. 
Let me start a new project. Oops, I meant to leave that open. And start a new project, not close the old that up that object. Let me open that back up. Sorry. Come on, robot. There we go. So that's just all the things. Uh, Sean, let me hide the canvas and the construction plane. So this is a little clearer. There we go. And origin. Great. Okay. So let's start a new one. So we're going to save this. Save. Example. Oops. In class. Loft bottle. Okay. So first thing, if you're starting with an image, or if you're starting with a dimension and a real bottle, great. I'm going to use a, uh, an image because I don't have one. So I'm just going to image, insert canvas, or that is the default button on mine. So there we go. Find from the computer, and it'll be the other one that I just opened. I'm going to select right in the front. And there we go. So I have my image. It's smack in the middle. Now, one thing I do want to do is I want to kind of try to align this as best I can. Excuse me. And what I mean by align this is now this bottle is offset. I said something kind of asymmetric. That works kind of better. The Z-axis is going right through the center of the bottle, at least from the bottom. And then when I get to the top, the center is kind of off, is kind of over here. That's okay. Just decide which one works better for you. If you want to move it over and kind of put the cap right in the center, that's probably better. We can always play with it elsewhere. Okay. Hit OK. And also, this is probably pretty tiny. So let's go to right click on the image, calibrate. Let's pick top and bottom points. Yeah, it's only 19 millimeters. So let's make this a more reasonable size. It's probably something more like, eh, probably like 400, but let's say more like 300 millimeters. Giant Hit F6 to resize. There we go. OK, so that's more what we're working with. Again, I'm estimating. It's probably the right size-ish. I don't know. All right. So the main thing that you need to do for this is a loft works off of multiple planes. So what you should do is find the areas where it makes the most changes. And what I mean by that is think of when we're slicing an object with a slicer program. It's taking multiple slices. Now that's doing it incrementally over the entire over the entire uh, object. But in here, where does it make the most changes? Obviously at the bottom. Looks like here at the widest, and then it kind of goes right down to the neck of the bottle, and then this little stop, this little step up, and then the top. So honestly, this looks like you could get away with really just a couple of sketch planes. So. I'm going to start with making a couple of offset construction planes. Now, the reason I'm using construction planes instead of just making sketches and moving them around, moving the construction planes is significantly easier than placing the sketches exactly where you want them. Because if I draw the sketches on a construction plane, wherever I move the construction plane, the sketch will follow. But if you have to readjust these sketches themselves, you have to go through and do that individually, and things can get kind of wonky sometimes. So we're going to start with one. It's just going by distance. I'm just going to move this all the way to the bottom. Now, I will tell you, working off of a single image, it's a little difficult to tell. You're going to have to flip back and forth between kind of project uh, uh, perspective view and straight on. Because I want this to be kind of right at the bottom, but this bottle is the photo was taken slightly from above. So kind of do your best with this. This, yeah, we'll call that the bottom. Great. All right. So realistically, uh, what is it? I'm forgetting how to see multiple views. Realistically, it would be better to your project from multiple views, which is shift, uh, press and hold shift and hit one or exclamation point. That way you can see from multiple views at one point, but if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. So I'm just going to create uh, more construction planes. If you want to start from the bottom, that's fine. If you want to start from the top, that's fine. I'm going to do it this arbitrarily, but
but if you were creating this off of dimensions, it would be best to work from the bottom and work your way up, just measuring where your major stops and starts are. So for this one, really, it kind of looks like it's going to be best just kind of right at this where it gets the widest, just here. So I'm a little, it's harder to see with the orange construction plane on an orange image. So you might want to play with that. But yeah, that looks pretty decent right there. You can see a little more clearly when I orbit around. Yeah, that works. Hit OK. Right click to do it again, because right click brings up the most recent action. Adding another one. Now, as you're pay putting construction planes, if you realize you need to add one in between, that's OK. But I'm trying to get these more or less in line. Yeah, that looks good. Do another one. And I'm just selecting off the bottom. You can pick any one of these. It really doesn't matter right now. The issue is that when you do this not in order, let's see, something right about there-ish. That works well. As I open the drop down for the construction plans, you can see right now, as I highlight numerically, one, two, three, and four, those are all in order. But if you start adding ones in between, your numbers are going to get are going to get thrown out. So if you do have to add one in in between and such, I would recommend go through and rename your planes in the in either ascending or descending order, just so they're in order. It's really easy to get confused with this because you have multiple different ones and keeping them in line, meaning in order is very important. So that's all. We'll get, looks like we can go with actually just those four for now. We'll see. Okay. So now we can do uh, sketches. But one of the things I should have done right from the get-go, make your separate components. So you can still do this. Let's add new components. Just don't activate it. We'll do this for bottle and another for cap. There we go. Because what I should have done is brought my construction planes onto that component just so it's easier to deal with. All I, but I can still do that. I haven't drawn anything on them, so I'm going to click and drag. Hopefully, it'll let me do that. It might not. It is not letting me. So there you go. Construction planes stay where they are. Okay. So should have done that, but that's okay. We'll add the sketches to it, and we'll move from there. All right. It's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Excuse me. So from here, let's add some sketches. And this part gets kind of repetitive, so bear with me. Start at the bottom. There we go. I don't have anything to go off of. I am just going to use kind of an oval shape here. So go to ellipse. Now, remember at the bottom, it starts, I aligned the axis more with the middle. As I go to the top, it's going to shift. So down at the bottom, I'm going to do my best to try to get one side to about as wide as this is. Remember, I'm kind of I'm looking at this bottle. This image is from technically a little bit of an angle. So we're going to kind of draw this out to where it looks like it's about at the hip there. Okay, 130. That works. Now remember, I got to add some dimension to this. Eh, let's estimate that if that's like 130, this is probably fairly wide. So well, it's 130, that would be like 75. Kind of a half of the half of the half of the or the width is half the uh, length. Okay, that's fine. I'm just estimating. Don't know. Like I said, if you have an actual bottle to work from, might be better. All right, finish sketch. You just need the one profile. If you're adding things to that, great. But from here, don't need it. Do another one. Sketch on this profile. Oh, I don't know why it's okay. Now it's warping everywhere. Sorry, weird. Do the same. An ellipse. Uh, looks like I can work right in the center. Yep, that's going to work well. Look how that's coming out. Looks good. And we'll do again. Let's see here. That was, oh, great. I didn't see what the number was. Well, if it was 75 there, probably a little bit wider here. Let's go with like 80 or 85. Sure, why not? Not exact. Looks like I should have moved this over a little bit. If I was being exact, yeah, I'd move the uh, that sketch profile over a little bit, and I might still do that. But just for the sake of time, let's move on. Now, up here, though, that's probably going to switch to a circle. So let's finish that sketch. Let's start a new sketch here. 
But this is going to be a little tricky because I'm not working off the center. Let's create a center diameter circle. But I mean, if I have trouble figuring out where the center is here, don't use a center one. Hit escape. And instead, go down and let's create a center, a two-point circle. So that makes it a lot easier. Now, I am working on this virtual plane, so it's okay. So pick one point that's about on one side. Pick the other one about there. That looks pretty good. Okay. Oh, no, what am I doing? There we go. Just need the one circle. Finish sketch. Now, the benefit is, since I've already drawn that there, my next one, edit sketch, creating up here, I can use this circle and the center point of that circle to base the next one off of. Makes things a lot more convenient. But don't forget, and it does get a little bit confusing to look at, the previous circles here, I am working up here. When you're working on these multiple planes, it does get a little confusing. So just know that I'm working there. That's okay. All right. Center circle now, because I can use that point if it'll let me. It's not letting me snap to that. So fine. Project it. <clears throat> go down to create. Uh, go to project or just press P. And I'm just going to select that dot. Okay. Let's me have that dot on this sketch plane now. Oof. Where are you? There you are. That little, it turns up in purple. Right. Now I can use a center point circle or center diameter circle. Sorry. There we go. And I just want it roughly as big as that cap looks. Yeah, 67 something something. You know what? Let's make that an even 68 just so it's less confusing. Okay. So as I slowly orbit up, you can see. Yeah, that's roughly the right size. Eh, it might should have been a little bit larger. That's okay. Double click on the dimension. Brings up the dimension again. Let's make that 70. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Because I'm not trying to get the cap. I'm trying to get the top of this lip here. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, ought, that looks like it ought to work pretty well. So like I said, I am not looking for the exact numbers. Just using this for the case of building this model. All right. So let's hide... This can or this canvas for a moment, so it's slightly less confusing to look at. So we're just looking at really it's just these these four major profiles. Okay, that makes it easy. All right, so let me save. Say sketch profiles made. All right. Next is the loft. So we said and when we're making the ring and experimenting with that, remember it has to be at least two profiles, and it will transition from one to the other. In this case, same deal, but has to have but using two or more, you get a lot more out of it. So bring up the loft tool. Now it is extremely important, either start at the top or the bottom and select in order. Do not just go along. You have to select in order. I'm gonna select it. So I'm starting at the bottom, middle. Now between a straight between two points, it's just a straight line. It's once you add the third, it starts making curves. So you can see, ooh, looks like my circle is kind of a little bit wide. I might need to go back and adjust those sketches anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. But as I unhide my canvas, you can see, yeah, it's doing some weird stuff. Now, though, let's add the fourth one in and see what it does. Because this base is off of basically um, fit points blind technology, or uh, calculations, rather, it can do wonky things when stuff goes inward. So what I might have to do is actually add or uh, um, splice a couple of lofts together. So in this case, I'm just going to go back so you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, on the toolbox here, it gives you an option to add or subtract pieces. I could hit X on the last one, chop it out. There we go. Cool. Now, it does look like, realistically, I should have another sketch in here to help add dimension to this bottle. That's not a bad thing. It just can get kind of wonky a little bit, but that's okay. Or maybe what needs to happen is I move that sketch up a little bit. So let's just leave what it is. We've got some options here. We don't really, for what we're doing here, don't really need to bother with a lot of this stuff. None of it's really going to change much for now. Um, you have the same operation options, all that kind of stuff at the bottom. For now, we're just going to leave all these settings as they are. Okay, so this is doing some weird stuff. I don't like 
excuse me, that is bulging more of at the toward the bottom, rather a little bit higher. So what we can do is this is what I was talking about. Rather than relying on the sketches themselves, let's move the construction planes around. Of course, I have to unhide all of them. And that one. Where is it? this one? OK, so let's edit that. Yeah, I know it's an offset plane. Oops, that's not what I meant to hit. Ah, just let me select the thing. There. <laughs> All right. So, like I was saying, it's better to move the sketch planes around than the sketches themselves. So all I have to do is hit the move key, either the arrows up here, or press M. Yes, the, that plane. Jeez. Sometimes this gets really funky. No. Come on. I don't know why it's not letting me just bring up the... There we go. Edit feature. Jeez, I would, must have just not been seeing it. Makes sense. It was right in front of my face. So, let's move that up a little bit. Instead of where I had it, which it was kind of pointing to right here, let's try moving it up a little bit. I don't know. 166, sure. Let it recalculate. Still bulging out a little bit, but that's a lot better. Now, you can actually add guide rails and stuff to this, but we're not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to base this off of sketches. I'm just trying to play with this as is. Um, ultimately, what we could probably do also is just to adjust the um, profiles, or better yet, let me control Z, bring that construction plane back where it was. Well, I don't know. I think I, we got some better examples. I don't know. Um, the other thing would simply be, let's add, let's roll back. Let's add a construction plane. Looks like we could really use one, something like in between, somewhere right there. Looks like I'm lining it up about with the bottom of where this opening is. Yeah, that works. Okay. Let's bring up my sketches again. There we go. And let's add one more sketch in there. Add sketch on the profile profile plane that I just added. There we are. Now, of course, it gets a little tricky if I can't see the sketches, or at the same time, it can get a little tricky with seeing the sketches. It's up to you. <clears throat> Where is it? Oh, it hid that last one. Jeez, what a pain. All right, and I'm just going to add another ellipse here. So I'm going to keep it in line with the, the one above. There we go. Let's just make it not as wide. So 170, and we were, what we were doing, how wide was, were these? That was 75, 80, let's say 80, sure. Okay, there we are. So added one more in there. Now we go back to the loft and just edit that loft. Now again, how to add stuff in, edit feature. We can't just snap one in there. It's gonna do some funky stuff. See, it's trying to recalculate back and forth. So we need to back up, just means delete some of the selections. So just really just going back to the beginning. And now select these in order again. That's a lot better. It's still well short of where I need to be, probably because I should have made this sketch plane maybe a little bit lower or made the bottom a little bit wider, something like that. But you can see how adding uh, an additional sketch pro uh, profile and such in there can really help. So let's just stick with that for what we have right there. To add, to create the, uh, the, one, the uh, connection here, Let's just do another loft. Select that top profile. Select that one. And now you see it just creates kind of a straight line between. Let me hide the canvas so you can see a little more clearly. There you go. And now the operation down here, it's not going to make any curves or anything. It's just a straight, almost a taper, really. Actually, it is a taper. But let it join. That's okay. All right. That works. Now, to create that handle... Pretty easy to do. You can see it's just a cutout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another construction plane, but this one I'm going to use the XZ plane. So there, straight out. And apparently, as I showed before, apparently you could sketch directly on this profile on this uh, object too. So 
I don't know. Either one works. <laughs> but I would recommend sketching on this plane. So create a sketch on that construction plane. There we go. And I'm just going to use a fit point spline to get as close as I can. Just picking a point on there, something, 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 just kind of doing my best to trace around. Remember, you could always come back and change these points. That's okay. Something like that. Get a little bit closer. Close the shape. All right. Now let's try to reshape this bean a little bit because that's getting kind of wonky there. Use the handlebars, reshape a little bit. That looks maybe less terrible. <clears throat> Not sure. No, no. I'm, yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Move it. Something about like that. Yeah, sure, that's close enough. Fine. And again, this is floating out in space. Great. So what I would do, I'm going to use, you got two options. Now, in the example that I did before, I had to use split body because I had accidentally sketched directly on the actual curved surface, which is pretty neat. I, I didn't know that, that you could do that now. <clears throat> but this one, you could do the same, or you can just extrude straight through. Do that. Chop right on through. That works. Or... I can use split body using select that body to split. Splitting tool is the sketch profile. It goes through. And okay. The only difference in doing that is that it either creates two bodies, which is the hollow and the little plug. Or if I use extrude, it just cuts through and just deletes that intersection. Does not matter which one. From there, yeah, let's add a fillet on the inside there. And yeah, just use a slider. Let's see if we can make this not terrible. You go too far with this fillet, and it eats through. Although that does make a pretty entertaining mouth-like thing. Uh, not quite what we want. So let's back that up a little bit. Looks like something around like the, uh, let's try five. Ten. Ten is too much. Five works fine. There we go. So a little bit of a curved surface. <clears throat> now, later, I'm going to explain how we can do or a, a, in the kind of bridging project. I'm going to show you how this can be improved using a different set of tools. But for now, we're just going to fill it that that works just fine. OK, so let's hide the canvas for a moment and the construction plane so we can see a little more clearly what we've done. All right. So you got a really simple curved asymmetrical object. Neat. So next, I just want to create my best estimate of what's inside this cap. So really, just a cylinder. So you can either start with a sketch on top, selecting a sketch, selecting the top there, and sketch there, or I'm just, oops. Um, or, frankly, you could just use a cylinder. Just smack in the middle. It's just harder to find center unless you mouse over. And you see the circle icon up here. That's the um, uh, concentric icon. And then just draw outward to where you expect the inside of that cap to be. So let's just make it an even 50 because 50 is right there, close enough. Yeah, that works. Again, this is not basing on exact dimensions. We're getting close enough, and close enough works just fine. If you want to push it to 55, something like that, fine. Okay, there we go. And extruding upward. We're going to stop somewhere short of where the cap is. So 38. Okay, fine. And that's going to join to the bottle there. Cool. So let's hide the canvas. All right, that's pretty much the bottle. Now, let me hide those sketches also so we can see what we're doing here. Now, I'm going to add two things, threads and make this hollow. First, let me save this. All right. Uh, bottle handle, and I see that my caps lock is in, so it's backwards. Okay, so we're adding the threads and making it hollow. However, the order of that is important because the shell tool that we're using to make hollow bases its calculations 
on the full profile here. So if I add threads first, it's going to try to make a hollow based on those threads. So if you if you forget that, it's okay. Let's go to create and go to the thread tool just to show you how to how to correct that. Go to thread. You're selecting a surface. It's going to automatically pick something. It's 55 millimeters. We're in metric. Let it stay metric. It's a designation and an M55, M55 by four. That is just a thread count. Now, it is showing it, but it looks kind of funny. That's because to save calculation space or power on your computer, it doesn't automatically model everything. What it can do is just give you the image of it. But if you select the, if you check the box, top one says modeled, now it's going to fully render the actual threads. There you go. Cool. If you click select, uh, remember size, you'll just, it'll just remember that for the next selections. But doesn't hurt to take a mental note of M55. All right, there we go. So now let's save threads. Now, if I hit shell, shell bases, remember, based off of the surface you select. So if I selected from the bottom, it would make it hollow from the bottom out. So I went it from the top. Let's say three millimeters. That's a reasonable thickness. Let's see if it goes funky or <clears throat> messes up. Not even showing it. What's going on here? Hello? You okay? What's going on here? It's not even showing it. What happened? Uh, okay, that's new. Uh, let me use a section analysis, which is I, it's just something you could use to just, again, take a cross section of, base it off of that plane. It always does it that way. Okay, that's interesting. It didn't make the top hollow, but it made the entire thing. That is new. I've never seen that happen before. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, well, either way, I'm just going to show you how to fix it if it if it miscalculated because you used the uh, threads tool first. All you got to do is just you can you can do, you don't have to delete anything. Just click on the click and hold the shell tool, drag it before the threads, and it'll recreate the shell. There you go. Recreated the shell before the threads, so that didn't model anything and it didn't muck anything up. So cool. There you go. If you wanted, I would have recommended probably added some uh, chamfers, on, or sorry, not chamfers, some fillets in here. So if you want to do something like that, roll it back, roll time back, and you can even use a section analysis in place. It's like there, I don't know, one millimeter curve, two, three, 25, probably too much there. But there you go. A little bit of a curve there, just smooths out. And that did a curve on both the inner collar and the outer edge hit okay now when i go back to time or to current it'll recalculate based on those curves as well the inside's kind of thin uh just because those threads are so thick but we're not printing these so it doesn't matter or if you do want to print these just make the uh just make the shell a little bit thicker edit feature on the shell i don't know make it a uh, four millimeters there you go. Just a little bit thicker. That didn't change much. And now you got some thicker section for threads. Okay, cool. There you go. That's it. That is all. That that makes a hollow, that makes a hollow bottle with threads and kind of a built-in handle that's a little bit wonky, but that's okay. That's what we're going for. Cool. Hide the section analysis because that doesn't change anything whatsoever. Okay. Let's hit save. <clears throat> threads and gel. I misspelled both of those. <laughs> All right. So the other thing is just making a cap. You do the exact same thing, really. Now I'm going to activate the cap component. And we're going to uh, make some parts. Now, actually, because I can't see the canvas image very clearly, let me reactivate the whole project. And uh, actually, let me hide this body because I can't even see that very well. All right. So the cap... It's just a cylinder with a little ridge, so I don't even need to use loft or anything for that. So let's activate the cap component. It still ghosts in there. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's all off center. So what I probably want to do is base um, 
my profiles and such, or not profiles, just the cylinder pa spacing placement, sorry, geez, uh, off of the object model. So let's unhide that. And what I want to do is uh, let's go ahead and create a sketch. That might be the easiest way to go about this. I'm going to create a sketch, but instead of on any of these or creating a profile plane, I'm just going to zoom in and select the top of my threads of my bottle right there. So what that's going to help me with is it's anything I create here is going to be centered right on that. So let's create a cylinder or a circle mouse along until I get my little my little concentric circle come up. Place the center point right there. And what was? Let's measure. Whoops. My actual sizing here was going to be 55. So that's how big I need to make of a hollow space inside because the threads are going to be based off of 55 millimeters. That was the same thing that the, that the uh, bottle is. Okay. And let's go ahead and add another one that's going to be like the outer size. Or I can just use an offset tool. Remember, let the thing do the work. Let's make it thick enough. I don't know. The other one was three or four millimeters. Let's make it a five millimeter cap. Cool. There we go. That works. Just so it's thick enough. All right. There we go. That's probably pretty much it. All right. So from here, let's make a cylinder. So I'm going to extrude. I'm going to select the top here. As well, okay, now we're, hang on a second. Now it's selecting a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's hide the original body. There we go. I was getting some some hidden stuff show up and it was just screwing everything up. All right, now let's extrude. And your bait, what's happening here is because the thread comes up at a ramp uh, and it selected all those lines, I'm having to select multiple things. If you're having trouble with that, just go to the side and just select everything. There you go. That makes it a lot easier. Ugh. It deselected. <laughs> it deselected the things I are, didn't have selected. So just to make everything confusing. There. Happy? All right. So I need to go up, but I also need to go down. I can do that uh, twice. So either I can do, I, meaning I can go ahead and extrude upwards some, which was, what was that? I don't know. Where's the image? I can't really see it. Yeah, eight works. Or I can also do two-sided extrusion. So up eight and down the rest. That makes it a lot easier. Now, it looks like there is a little lip to this cap, so I'm going to stop just there, and then I'm going to add something else to that. Let's hit OK. There we are. So it's just a cylinder that's just larger. And what I'm doing to make that lip there, don't even make a new sketch. I'm going to create a cylinder, just selecting on the bottom face there, Concentric again. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So, I don't know, to about there. That looks like 71, 72, 73, something like that. Great. And let's just drag it downwards a little bit. If you need, unhide the body so you can see how to make it to about there. If it's a little shy, that's okay too. But yeah, four millimeters. Great. Perfect. That works. There you go. It's a tiny little top hat. Now, to hollow this out, you can use shell, but I don't recommend it because you still need to make sure that the inside of that cap is 55 millimeter circle or cylinder rather. So what you should do, um, I could have I could have used the sketch inside, and I still can. So like if I hit uh sketch, uh, sorry extrude, let's unhide that sketch in there. See the problem is I'm getting all these like wonky things here. So if you have trouble selecting what's going on in there, I still can. I can select, select, and just drag this down to where it cuts through. That works. Or you can start a new sketch in the bottom and drag it upward. Same diff. But that worked. There we go. Okay. Again, I prefer to use, instead of just an arbitrary distance, two object, select the bottom. That way it cuts completely through. And if I make any changes, it doesn't harm anything. Cool. There we go. All right. There's the inside. Select threads, select the inside, it's 55, modeled, boom, all set, done, there you go. So threads inside, threads outside. You want to throw some fancy stuff on here, go for it. Um, on the 
image. It did have like some little notches on the sides. If you want to add stuff like that, really easy to do. Let me just save cap and threads. Um, I like to do stuff like this, easy. Create a sketch on the top. Um, I don't know, like a little circle, something, something right along the edge. I don't know. Let's make that three millimeter circle. Cool. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to extrude that little down and then just little thing down and then just use, I don't know, 30. Sure. Fine. It was partial anyway. Neat. And then just use um, the uh, circular pattern to make multiples of that feature around an axis. Now, I don't have a major axis, but I do have a point, or I should. Ugh. Now it's going to give me grief here. Yeah, I can't select. You cannot select this axis here because it's going to throw way out there. Ugh, what a pain. Well, I wonder if it'll let me do pattern on a path here and select the edge as a path. Oh. Ah, eh, you know what? Don't worry about it. That's just cause, that's going to cause grief. I got to draw like a line through that and everything to make a new axis. Don't worry about it. If your piece is off center, it's okay. I'll just add a couple of fillets and clean this thing up a little bit. That's all. There you go. Slightly roundy. Okay. Okay. So I've quickly modeled. You see, I was trying to recreate those lines, but I don't feel like dealing with the thing. And let's uh, save some time. Okay. Hide the stock images. Unhide the body. I should have shifted into auto color so you could see things a little more clearly. And there you go. So the last step, let me save. The last step is just adding a joint in this. So go to joint. Remember what you select first is what will move. What you select second is to where it will move. So it's going to it's gonna have me select inside of this bottle or inside of the lid. So as I zoom way up inside, center point right there. Boom, there we go. Easy peasy. Orbit back down. And I'm trying to get on the top of the cylinder. If you have trouble selecting that floating space in between, or one, if you have trouble seeing it, hide one of the objects. That's okay. But sometimes you have trouble grabbing that. Just like for the just like for the uh the lidded box, if you mouse over a flat surface that is on the same plane, press and hold control. And it locks your selection to just that plane. Now I can move over, snap over a little bit easier. Now it's wanting to select. The problem is square is the center of those threads. X is the center of the bottle or of the circle. Select the X. Would they not be the same? Because threads, the, the question is why would they not be the same? The threads create a kind of off center. It's not actually, just in the modeling it is. Gotcha. Yeah, and like machining, it's exactly center. And there you go. So now that's on there. Now you do want to select different motion. Default is rigid, and that just gives you anxiety, or at least it does me. <laughs> you want to select cylindrical. That's going to move it up and down and rotate. Now, obviously, it's clipping through. That's fine. You can you can adjust the motions here. Rotate. Yeah, let it go. Let it rotate. Does not matter preview it's going to rotate there you go but you have a second motion which is slide select that one animate it's going to go up and down but it's going to go too far so let's select let's set some minimum maximum all that is right where it is is good and let's move that up and eh, let's move it up higher than that i don't know 80 i just hit the top of my screen there you go so now when i hit animate stops dead at the bottom and just goes up higher there you go Last step is just grounding that object. Save is cylinder joint. Siblinder. I forgot how to spell again. <laughs> okay. Now, we just ground that object. Problem is, you cannot ground the top project. This is why you need to have your object in a separate component. All you need to do, if you didn't do this already, 
just drag and drop it into another one. Drag and drop the bottle into the uh, bottle component if it'll let you. Come on, buddy. I believe in you. It's not letting me this time. Oh, I didn't have everything fully to the front. There you go. You got to have it. Uh, I guess you got to have uh, the history slider all the way to the front. So I'm just dragging the object, the body object from the full, from the main project uh, tree into the component. So it changes to change to the blue. There you go. Cause it's just showing a new color. Now I can right click on the bottle component and hit ground. There you go. Now I can move this guy around and it's not going to mess anything up. So a lot of free room to play with this. The main thing is we're show, we're experimenting with how to create a body with a loft tool. And I'm just going to open the section analysis thing again so you can see what's going on here. Um, main thing is because this is something we're, we're going to revisit with a different set of tools, use the exact same project, and just making some changes to it uh, when we come back. So... Loft bottle, you can use whatever dimensions you want. Um, if you end up making a teeny tiny little one, same diff, it's all right. The only thing that'll mess up is the only thing, or it's not going to mess up. The only thing that'll change is the actual threads you're using when you use the automatic thread tool. But yeah, make it about the size you would want or the size you would. If you have a bottle to work from, that works well. If not, eh, use an image. That works, that, that does plenty. Um, but there you go. Easy way to make a, uh, a more amorphous bottle or a more amorphous form using the shell tool to hollow it out, using a couple of extrudes or split body tools to make a, an integrated handle. And of course, we're going to experiment with this a little bit more in the future. So play around with it. Let me know if I can help. Okay, where is... All right, keep losing the... Okay, there's the stop record. <laughs>